is Kyler and we're going to be looking at how to analyze a short story. So the definition of, an of analysis is examining the parts to understand the whole. So we look at all the little pieces in which this case we're looking at the literary elements that are talked about in chapter 6 and we use those, uh, those to help us understand the theme of the story, the concept that the whole story revolves around or helps us understand more about. Remember stories have meaning the meaning we're looking for right now is the theme, the universal concept the story revolves around. So we're examining the parts to understand the whole, the theme. The literary elements we'll look at to help us understand the theme are characterization, setting, point of view, plot, language, style, and tone, all of that is one element, foreshadowing, symbolism, and irony. And the chapter six talks about these more in depth, so I'm going to go on, but I'm going to talk about a one of them I'm going to emphasize is characterization or character development. Literary fiction is really focused on how a character is growing, how they're, they're reacting, how they're learning from their experiences. So the character development is going to be very important, especially the main character or the protagonist. And so you think about the author starting from nothing and developing this well-rounded character that we actually care about. And then the author had to think of all these character traits to make them come alive. Things like their age, their gender, what type of job they had, what are their talents, history, their family, friends, their immediate goals, far-reaching goals, what do they like, what do they not like, what is their overall personality, what are their strong points or good virtues, what are the weak points or flaws or fears, what makes them like a real life human being. And so when we are reading the story, we're analyzing and finding all those details as we're looking at what the character does, what they say, how they react to others and to different situations. The setting is the time, place, and the atmosphere in which a story takes place. All that environmental factors go in with setting. In the story of Hour, we see that it's late 1890s, right at the end of the Victorian era. It's in America. It's inside a room of a middle-class home. It's looking out at the street, springtime, cloudy with patches of blue in the sky, birds singing, merchants selling their wares. So we can start making connections between all of these details and understanding what they mean and what they, what type of theme they relate to. For example, being inside a home could be, her being inside that room could be symbolic of her being trapped inside herself. As, as a woman in Victorian age society, she didn't have that many rights to even think or be herself. Springtime is a time of hope and new beginnings. Cloudy with patches of blue. Cloudy means scary, bad, for you know, ominous. And patches of blue means a little bit of ray of hope, a little way of escape. Um, so we can see these details and start making connections to what their the whole story is about. Point of view is all about what type of narrator or storyteller did the author choose to tell the story. Uh, if there's a first-person narrator, then the character themselves would be telling a story. If Story of an Hour were in first-person narration, Mrs. Mallory would be saying, well, I went into my room and I just thought and thought and thought. So we would be hearing it from her point of view directly. Later on, we're going to be reading another story, which is in Chapter 6, called A.M.P., which is first-person. Third-person omniscient, there's a god-like narrator, and they're telling the whole story, and they can see everybody's point of view. In the book that, you're look that we're using this semester, the story, The Storm, is third-person omniscient. Third-person limited point of view, that's where the narrator is not a character of the story. They're godlike narrator looking down at all the characters, and they can see mainly one main character's thoughts. A third-person objective point of view, the narrator is not the character of the story, but he can see, and the narrator can see and all the action, hear what they're saying, but it cannot get any uh, clo very close to their thoughts or feelings. Here's a better look at the third person point of views. Third person omniscient, you see that godlike narrator looking at everybody's thoughts and feelings. Third person limited, they mainly see into one person's thoughts and feelings. And all the rest of the characters are mainly um, relayed as they are affecting that character. Third person objective, like a fly on the wall, they just stand there and they watch, and they listen, but they are not close to the character's thoughts or feelings. In the story of an hour, it's most of the time a third-person limited narration. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the narrator, it does start out with Richard, 
And so we know a little bit about Richard and what Josephine are thinking, but for the majority of the story, it's third person limited. We're mostly in Mrs. Mallard's thoughts and feelings, the protagonist's thoughts and feelings. When she goes into her room, we get psychically closer. It means we're very psychic. We can see into her thoughts and feelings. We get closer and closer to her psychically until we know more about her feelings than she actually does. So that shows us that the narrator is separate from the character. It actually delves, it's like a ghost possessing her soul. And we actually know that she only loved her husband sometimes. That's something that she wouldn't admit to herself. Um, when she leaves the room, the narrator does start to withdraw from her and look at her a little bit more from the outside perspective. Again, but we're still mainly in her thoughts and feelings. We're not jumping into anybody else's thoughts and feelings. Um, but the very last line is very cold and aloof. So it's interesting that the psychic distance totally withdraws and we're left with an almost objective narrative style that she's dead and all that remains is the cold verdict of society that she's dead and it was the joy that kills. Iron There's a little bit of irony there too because we know that she didn't die because she was so happy to see her husband alive, but she actually died because she all of a sudden realized that all those years that she was imagining herself living in perfect freedom are now snatched away from her. Um, the plot of a short story. So we in the book it shows you it'll show you um, on the chapter about plot it'll show you pictures and diagrams of plot the little um, triangular plot diagram. But I want to mainly look at a very simple version of plot. Concepts like catalyst, that's the event that sets the story in motion. Conflict, that's what hinders the main character from achieving his or her goals, that struggle within themselves. And then the climax, that's the point where the main character has to make a decision or take a decisive action. At this point, there's no turning back. And then we ask our question there in the following action is, does the character win or lose the prize? Do they gain knowledge or do they gain success? They get an awareness, an epiphany moment, or does the main character lose the prize? Is success snatched away from them? Do they give up? Remember, we're interested in how characters react to conditions provided in the story. In the story of an hour, the catalyst is that she learns about her husband being killed in a train crash. And that conflict is an internal conflict. She's struggling with her feelings that she's happy that he's gone and she's wondering is it okay to be happy not so much happy that he's dead because she still loved him remember sometimes but that she's happy that now she has her own life to live um and at the climax she's at the top of the stairs that's very um symbolic of the climax and she's goddess of victory is the words they use i love that um phrase and she's at the top of the stairs determined to have a full happy life of being free and independent she's trying reaching for that prize um, but did she win? Well, she did win out over herself. She conquered all those fears and inhibitions that society had put on her. But her victory is snatched away by fate. Once she was sick already with a heart problem, she'd gone through a lot of emotional um, upheaval. But then she sees that all those years are, no, are shut. You know, there's no longer, that door is no longer open to her because her husband is alive. <clears throat> Now we look at, remember, we're going to take all those literary elements and help us understand a theme. That's a universal concept that the story is built around. So the concept is usually an issue that we as a society and human beings need to deal with. So it's going to be common to us as human beings. It could be things like gender expectations. What do our society expect of people to be? If they're a man, they should act like this. If they're a woman, they should act like that. Um, poverty. How do we um, make sure that everybody has food? and shelter, coming of age, what are the things people go through as they're going from that transition from being a teenager to an adult, um, prejudice, the struggle between good and evil, repression of women, um, all sorts of different things that we could look at these issues that could be a theme that we're going to pull from the story. Is there a right or wrong theme? Well, when you're exploring, there's there could be many, many different themes. The story of an hour deals with a lot of different things, from equality to the repression of women in the Victorian age to expectations of women, expectations of what a man's supposed to be, family relationships, communications, a lot of different themes. So when you're looking at explore themes, it makes sense to you based on the details that you find when you're annotating the story. 
And here's an example of me when I annotated the story. You're going to have the power process that's going to help you, but you want to take that power process and actually build on it, especially when you're going to have to be writing about some of these stories. And when you actually get to where you're writing a story about a story for your papers, you want to do a lot more annotating of the, on the story, adding to what you already put in the power process. So the things that I noticed when I was annotating the story was a title. And this title makes me think of how our lives could change in just one hour. Um, that Mrs. Mallard is a married woman. So we see that her Mrs. Mallard, and look at how, what the names that they use call Mrs. Mallard. Look at when she's actually, they use her first name, Louise, and look at when they're calling her a wife or whatever they're calling her. That's kind of designating what her role is at that moment. She has heart trouble. So I noticed that at the beginning. So there's some foreshadowing. Um, and then they mention that Mrs. Mallard acts differently when she finds out that he's dead. She doesn't act like what most women would. Most women would be in shock and wouldn't be able to process that information that fast. But she starts crying right away. Um, there's lots of words that are kind of spooky, like haunted and possess and reaching toward her. So different words that are gothic in tone. Spring means new life, new beginnings, happy, refreshing. So I'm wondering how is this story about someone dying also about someone finding a new beginning? So as you're reading your stories, not just this one, but the uh, stories that we're going to be reading, I want you to delve in and start looking for the details and point out those nuggets of gold that will help you to find out what the message of the story is. What is the meaning that we can pull from the story? What is the theme, the issue that we can learn more about, to empathize with other people and under other conditions and to help us solve some problems in this world? Thank you for listening. Talk to you later. Bye.